Hello everyone and welcome to my first recent reading wrap-up of 2020. I've talked about it before that I'm changing up how I do my wrap-ups this year and that I'm not doing monthly wrap-ups. I'm doing wrap-ups every single time I finish five books. So I have finished five books and I'm here to give kind of my brief feelings on each of them. So the first book that I finished in 2020 is Starsight by Brandon Sanderson. This is the sequel to Skyward by Brandon Sanderson, which is a sci-fi book about a young girl who is dreaming of becoming a pilot for her community, which is being kind of trapped and bombarded by this alien species called the Krell. Krell? Yes. I just recently watched something that had an alien... Oh, uh, the Marvel stuff with the Kree, and I'm getting everything confused. But anyway... <laughs> But she's having a hard time getting into school and being accepted because and being accepted by her peers because her father was a pilot who is now deemed a coward because he ran away from battle. And it's this kind of epic sci-fi story about her journey to become a pilot. I gave this five stars. I almost didn't, surprisingly, because it went a different direction than I was anticipating. And at first I wasn't enjoying it because I wasn't seeing the characters that I had gotten close to and used to in the first book. And we're getting this kind of whole new set of characters. And I wasn't sure how I was feeling about them. But when I kind of let that go and understood that this is setting up the larger world and teaching you about the larger world and getting other characters that are obviously going to a need to be there to, in order to have impact on the future books, um, I started loving it a lot more once I kind of let go of what I wanted the series to do and not just kind of letting and trusting Brandon Sanderson to show me where he's taking the series. This one is definitely a little bit more political than the first one. The first one had way more action scenes, was a little bit more fast-paced, and this one definitely took a slower, more political intrigue look at this world and this universe. and. I liked it. I like that this series is going to do both, and then it's not just one thing. I feel like when you have a book or a fantasy or a sci-fi series that only does one of those two things well, then it can leave the world feeling a little flat and boring and not real. But because this book has such an in-depth political system and in-depth culture, as well as the fun action sequences that we all love in fantasy and sci-fi, it carries this balance between the both that make this story and this series really good. So if you're interested in sci-fi and don't know where to start, this is a really good place to start. Brandon Sanderson makes it very approachable and very understandable. You never feel lost in the science of everything. And it's just a good time. The second book that I finished this year was The Last Time I... Yeah, The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. This is a thriller book about a girl who went to a summer camp while she was in high school, and when she was there, her three cabin mates went missing. And now, as an adult, she is going back to that camp to see if she can find some answers. And I really enjoyed this book. I wasn't sure about it going in because, one, I have never been to a summer camp. Uh, I wasn't a camp kid growing up, so I was afraid I couldn't like connect to some of the things there. And I recently have just, you know, I go into thrillers and mystery thrillers a little cautious because uh, I either really, really love them or I really, really hate them. <laughs> but what I really liked about this book is Riley Sager's writing style. I think just based on his writing style, I will pick up anything he writes from here on. Because what was different about this book compared to other thriller books I read is that he doesn't force the imagery on you. He doesn't really tell you the descriptions of what you're seeing. He tells you the atmosphere and the feeling of what you're reading in the book. So instead of telling you like this campground looks like this, he tells you the smells, the feeling, what he's hearing, like those extra descriptions, but not actually telling you physically what it looks like. It allows the reader to come up with what it looks like based on those other prompts. So when he's talking about the smell of a campfire or the eerie wind blowing through the trees or the smell of rotting leaves and things like that, it makes me imagine my own camping experiences. So I feel like if I had actually been to a summer camp as a kid, 
you would just fill in those blanks with your own memories and your own experiences and your own vision of campgrounds that you've actually been to. And that makes it even more spooky because it's then happening in a real location to you. And it makes the story and the threat feel all that more real. And I really, really liked that because even though I had never been to a campground, I've been camping before. So I could kind of fill in those gaps with camps that I remember going to as a kid with my family. Most of the time I feel like that's not done in thriller books. Thriller books typically try and tell you, just like a lot of other books, exactly what you're seeing. And I liked the more ambiguous exposition in this one. But I really, really liked this book. I do own his first book that I plan on reading very soon, and I am very excited to read his newest book that's coming out, so I've got a lot of Raleigh Sager to catch up on, and I'm very excited about it. Oh, and I gave this five star or four stars, if I didn't say. The next book that I read was Recursion by Blake Crouch, and I gave this three stars. This was a slight disappointment for me. I gave Dark Matter by Blake Crouch five stars, and a lot of people who also read Blake Matter were raving about Recursion and loved Recursion, so I thought I would be no exception. But Recursion for me, while I really loved the idea of the book and the science behind the book and all of that was super great, I didn't mind the characters, they were fine, my problem with it is that it felt like two different books. So the beginning of Recursion feels very much like Blake, Ma Blake Matter, <laughs> Dark Matter, and it feels like this kind of fast-paced sci-fi action movie. It's very, kind of reminds me of... James Bond movies, Jason Bourne movies, um, John Wick movies, like things like that, but with more of a sci-fi twist to them, which I loved. It's one of the things I loved about Blake Matter. God, Dark Matter, why do I keep doing that? It's one of the things that I loved about Dark Matter and had me loving Recursion to begin with. But then, about halfway through the book, the tone switches. But before it switches, you have this 50-page purgatory that nothing's really happening and the direction of the book kind of loses focus and you don't know what's going to happen and during those 50 pages I had a really hard time wanting to pick up the book and wanting to continue because it had no direction anymore and it had nothing driving it because the first problem or the first thing that you thought was going to carry you through the book was resolved already. So you're just like, what now? How is there, you know, 150 pages left in this book? That was really difficult for me to get through that kind of limbo period. And then when you finally got through it and got to the end of the book, the last 100 pages of the book felt like a completely different book. It went from this high stakes, fast action movie to a drama, philosophical movie. And while both sides of that book were good and I enjoyed them for two separate things. I enjoyed it for being the high stakes action movie and I enjoyed it for being the more like philosophical drama movie. But putting them together in the same book while also having that gap between those two sections that felt very boring really stunted my reading experience and really hindered my enjoyment of the book as a whole. So those are my major complaints about this and why I didn't get any higher than a three stars for me. It doesn't mean I'm gonna stop reading Blake Crouch. I love his stuff, I love his ideas, I just think this one didn't quite work for me. The fourth book that I finished so far this year is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. This book I gave two stars. The twists weren't shocking, the twists weren't new and inventive, they are things that have been used many times before, and our main character we're following, Theo, I did not like from the beginning. He is bad at his job. I just, I just, I didn't like how this book was set up. It didn't feel like a thriller. It didn't feel like a great mystery. The writer seemed to care more about making the doctors in this book sound smart than actually putting the effort into making the twists of the book and making the thriller aspects of the book clever. I just felt like the priorities of this book were in the wrong places. I feel like if you're new to the thriller mystery category and you're not familiar with a lot of the like twists and tropes of thrillers and mysteries, then you'll probably enjoy this more than I did because the twist I think will be fresh and new to you. But if you are someone who reads a lot of thrillers and mysteries, you'll have seen this trope before and it's nothing shocking or surprising. And I don't think the author did enough 
to try and steer the reader away from figuring it out. The reason I read thrillers and mysteries is that I want to help solve the mystery. I want to try and figure it out before it happens. So when it's blatantly too easy and the author is like throwing me a bone to help figure it out, it just, it's too easy and I didn't enjoy that. And the fifth book that I finished recently is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. I gave this four stars. No, I gave this three stars. It was like a high three stars, like 3.5. Even though that's kind of like a middle of the road rating, I did really enjoy this book. I just think I enjoyed it more for what I now can expect from future books, if that makes sense. But anyway, this book is about a college-aged girl named Alex who kind of finds herself roped into becoming the person who makes sure that the secret houses of Yale University are staying in line. But the twist is that these secret societies deal with magic. I really really enjoyed the world of this book. The plot for me in this was the weak part and the amount of information you have to take in in this book is a lot. There is a lot that she has to kind of lay the groundwork for so that this story makes sense even in the slightest. What I was learning and the information you are given is really interesting information. The world Lee is building in this series is going to be massive and super interesting and something I am all about. It reminded me a lot of when I read The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon for the first time. And a lot of people say this about The Bone Season is that it's confusing and that the world is really detailed and there's a lot of information and it can be really hard to understand. So a lot of people leave the first book from the bone season feeling really confused and frustrated because they don't understand the world yet. And I get that because that's how this is too. But when the world finally does click and it will click, it might just take a reread or reading the second book in order for that to happen. Once it clicks, it's just, it opens up for this huge possibilities in where the story can go and your understanding of the world and just how then interesting the world is because there's so many small little things and it's so detailed and it's so incredible. So I get why a lot of people didn't like it. It has a lot of very hard and triggering content. It is not a book for the lighthearted. It is confusing and hard to grasp all of the information that is being thrown at you. And it's slow then because of that. I enjoyed this book and I think mainly it's because I had lowered my expectations. I didn't want it to be like Six of Crows. I like slower paced books that are very dense and have a lot of information to give to a very complex world. And I enjoyed the characters and their dynamics with each other. They all felt very real and had real motives. I'm super excited to see where this story goes. I guess I'm in the camp of people who enjoyed this more than not because I feel like a lot of people didn't. But those are the first five books that I have read and finished in 2020. And I really like this setup because I feel like I can talk a little bit more about each book and give a little bit more of my feelings in a mini review than I would if I was doing a monthly wrap up. If you've read any of these books, please let me know how you felt about them in the comments down below. But until next time, happy reading and I will see you all 